Welcome to the Rewriting Naruto series part 13, a series of videos where I rewrite Naruto making changes to improve the story for my personal taste. This is only part 13 of a very long series, so definitely subscribe so you never miss any future rewrite videos. Watch the previous parts if you haven't already, there's a link for those in the description below, and ring the notification bell so you always know when the rewrites come out. The like goal for this video is gonna be 600 likes. If we get to 600 within the first 24 hours, I'll drop the next rewrite within a week. We pick up with Yamato disguised as Sasori's Hiroko puppet meeting the spy, who is still Kabuto in the rewrite. Their conversation goes about the same way it did in the original, and then Orochimaru arrives. Naruto, Hinata and Sakura are watching from the forest. The scene unfolds the same way. Orochimaru talks to them a bit. Kabuto then attacks Yamato, destroying the Hiruko disguise and Orochimaru wraps Yamato with snakes. However, in the rewrite, instead of using a substitution to avoid that, Yamato will use a wood clone as basic substitutions don't exist in the rewrite. Yamato's conversation with Orochimaru and Kabuto continues the same way as in the original, up until when Orochimaru says, Why don't you call in the two baby rats hidden in the forest? Yamato, who's very nervous at this point, calls in the rest of Team Kakashi. Hinata, Sakura and Naruto enter the fray. Orochimaru then thinks, Interesting. I thought there were only two hidden in there. Naruto is fuming, just like in the original. We can see that the QB chakra is starting to flare. Things will then happen largely the same here. Naruto will begin to lose control and let his anger take over as the Nine Tails chakra oozes out of his body. He will attack Orochimaru as well, sending it flying off to the middle of the forest. Strangely though, Hinata seems oddly calm as Naruto rages. We'll also get the flashback where Jiraiya told Tsunade, Kakashi, and Yamato about the Four Tails version of the QB cloak and its powers. Orochimaru comes back and then they have that conversation with Yamato where Orochimaru tells him that he was an experiment he conducted with Hashirama cells, just like in the original. Orochimaru then provokes Naruto even more about Sasuke the way he did in the original and Naruto manifests the third tail. And now now we get to the big changes. For starters, Kabuto will not rush at the three tails like in the original because that's just very stupid, it makes no sense. Instead, Kabuto will only observe as Yamato is the one trying to rush at the nine tails, attempting to contain it. Naruto flares the QB chakra, hitting Yamato square on with a tail, exploding the bridge that sends Yamato flying away. The bridge beneath gets wrecked and the captain of Team Kakashi sustains a bad wound to his abdomen. Yamato's flying limp body impacts with Sakura, knocking her unconscious off the bridge. Sakura begins falling down, and Yamato crashes to the other side of the bridge, hitting the ground and creating a crater upon impact. He appears to be breathing, but very much unconscious and wounded. Kabuto managed to jump away in time to avoid any impact from Naruto's Kyubi chakra, and Hinata used her Hyuga rotation, blocking it and taking no damage. She sees Sakura falling off the bridge and jumps down, diving face first towards Sakura's direction. Hinata intercepts the unconscious Sakura midair, grabbing her with one arm, holding her tight. With her free arm, Hinata uses a powerful air palm aimed to her side that propels her towards the wall of the chasm. She lands on it sideways, using her chakra to stand up horizontally on the chasm wall holding Sakura, who is still unconscious. Wreckage of Tenchi Bridge falls towards their direction, about to crush them. Hinata uses an air pump to shatter it, saving Sakura one more time. Naruto, overtaken by rage and the QB Chakra, begins pursuing and fighting Orochimaru, and that fight will remain largely the same as in the original. The only difference is that Orochimaru will go in clearly wanting to kill Naruto. He'll think, if I kill 
the Nine Tails Jinchuriki here. The Nine Tails Chakra will take over a decade to coalesce back into the world, which will put a halt to the Akatsuki's plans. <laughs> As Yamato is unconscious, he won't be able to send a wood clone to watch over the fight, but Hinata will be watching over it instead. She'll watch it from a distance with her Byakugan, and she will provide the same commentary as Yamato did in the original. That fight will then ensue the same way it did in the original manga. Kabuto, who dodged the initial Nine Tails blast unharmed, sees Yamato unconscious, bleeding from his abdomen. He smirks and thinks, Wow, well, let's get rid of this loose end. Lord Orochimaru left in the Leaf Village, shall we? Kabuto activates his chakra scalpel and swings at the unconscious Jonin's neck. As he's about to finish Yamato off, Kabuto gets hit by a wave of compressed air that sends him flying away. He lands on his feet that was prevented from striking Yamato at the last second. When Kabuto looks up, he sees Hinata who just climbed up the chasm carrying Sakura on her back. One hand outstretched, which she used to blow an air palm towards Kabuto's direction. Hinata then stands in front of Yamato. She sees that he is alive with her Byakugan and gently lays Sakura on the ground next to him, telling Kabuto, we're supposed to capture the spy alive, but maiming was never forbidden. Kabuto laughs. You think you can fight me? Path Pathetic girl. Hinata says, I won't fight you, no. I will destroy you. Kabuto smiles. I saved your life once, you know. You probably wouldn't remember though, you were quite unconscious. Is this how you repay me? Hinata says, I couldn't care less. Kabuto laughs and says, Well, today's our lucky day. Lord Orochimaru will kill Naruto and ruin the Akatsuki's plans, and I will capture a prime Hyuga specimen for experimentation as a cherry on top. You have no chance against me. Surrender, and I may allow you anesthetics while Lord Orochimaru is plucking your eyeballs. Hinata dashes towards Kabuto. He activates his chakra scalpels and they engage in taijutsu combat. Gentle Fist versus Kabuto's cutting chakra. Hinata is able to avoid the scalpels, but unable to strike back because Kabuto uses them as a defensive jutsu as well, putting them in front of Hinata gentle face attacks, which prevents Hinata from making contact with her hands, otherwise she would get cut. Hinata misses a strike to Kabuto's side, but she flicks her wrist, blasting another air palm out of her hand, hitting Kabuto on the side of his head. He gets very discombobulated, his vision blurs and his ears buzz. Kabuto jumps away and Hinata motions a hand sign that Kabuto cannot identify because of the blurness and his vision. Knocked off balance, Kabuto begins weaving hand signs in desperation. Genjutsu! False life! Hinata is caught on the Genjutsu. The ground suddenly turns into an ocean of corpses. Hinata falls down to it and the corpses begin grabbing and slashing at her. She centers herself and blasts her own chakra out of her body, breaking the Genjutsu. The ground goes back to normal. However, Kabuto is right in front of her. The time she was under the illusion was enough for him to get closer and prepare a scalpel attack. It seems he recovered from the arm palm blast. The scalpel slashes towards Hinata's chest, but Hinata expels chakra from that area, creating a barrier that blocks the chakra scalpel. Hinata rotates, using the spinning to hit Kabuto and sends him flying off. We can see Kabuto's arm and chest were hit by Hinata's rotation and he lands poorly. He stands up and as he does so, he is already healing his wounds. While this is happening, Naruto is fighting Orochimaru and Hinata is watching that with her Byakugan. Kabuto looks at his wounds and thinks, I cannot believe this girl is this strong. She didn't even have the backbone to be a ninja back in the tuning exams. He doesn't have much time to think though as another Hinata appears behind him. Gentle fist, positive energy seal. Hinata's index and middle fingers glow red as she strikes Kabuto from behind. He is sent flying one more time. The Hinata who was in front of him doesn't let up. As Kabuto lands, she enters a stance, preparing the 64 palms to finish him off. Kabuto then pulls a kunai with a paper bomb explosive and tosses it towards Sakura and Yamato who are still unconscious, laying on the ground. Hinata halts the 64 palms and instead directs an air palm towards the flying
flying kunai, hitting it and changing its direction. This saves Yamato and Sakura as the kunai explodes far away from them. Kabuto uses that window of opportunity to jump out of Hinata's reach. The Hinata who appeared behind Kabuto stands beside the original Hinata now. Kabuto thinks, Shadow Clone. But when did she do it? He remembers it then. Right after his vision got blurred, Hinata weaved a hand sign he couldn't see well. He also couldn't hear the Shadow Clone being formed because his ears were buzzing. He thinks, I have to take this seriously or I'll die. Kabuto then notices something. The wounds he sustained after getting hit by Hinata's rotation are not healing anymore. Hinata says, you won't be able to hear yourself for a while after my positive energy seal. And if this was a fair fight, you'd already be dead. Kabuto says, I thought you're only going to maim me. Hinata says, maybe I changed my mind. Kabuto says, whatever. Answer me this though, if Sasori didn't make it here and told you about this mini on this bridge, it means that he is either dead or captured. Hinata says, you'll be the next one to die. Kabuto says, well, it's great to hear he is dead. You saved Lord Orochimaru and myself a lot of work by killing him. Now, where were we? Kabuto pulls five scrolls from his satchel. He tosses them on the ground, rolling them open. Weaving hand signs, he says, summoning jutsu. Five animated corpses appear out of the scrolls. Not Edo Tensei's, but actual dead bodies. Inata sees with her Byakugan that the dead bodies are indeed imbued with chakra, and she deduces they respond to Kabuto's commands. Hinata uses the Shadow Clone Jutsu one more time. Three more Hinata clones appear. Kabuto says, That pesky little Shadow Clone Jutsu, huh? Copying the Nine Tails rat will get you nowhere. Hinata gives Kabuto a death stare. She thinks, I cannot let him get close to Sakura and Captain Yamato. One of her clones jumps back, standing directly in front of her two unconscious companions. Kabuto sends his five corpses forward. He joins them in the offensive as well. Hinata and three of her shadow clones also dash forward, clashing with Kabuto and his summons. One of the corpses spits a tar-like substance, aiming for Hinata and her clones, and they respawn, rotating again, blocking the tar. Another corpse jumps towards their direction, opens its vest, and we see it's filled with paper bombs. Kabuto detonates it. The corpse explodes with ferocity, igniting the tar. Tall flames rise, but Hinata's rotation still holds against the fire and the shockwave of the explosion. Kabuto now has four corpses. Another corpse runs towards Yamato and Sakura's direction. We see its vest is also filled with paper bombs. The Hinata clone protecting the two unconscious companions dashes forward and intercepts that corpse, landing a gentle fist blow. The corpse explodes, destroying that Hinata clone as well. Luckily, Sakura and Yamato were not harmed by that explosion. Kabuto has three corpses now. Hinata and her other clones stop rotating. Kabuto dashes forward. He slashes at two Hinata clones, cutting them with his chakra scalpel. They vanish. Hinata and her last remaining clone stand back to back. They are attacked by Kabuto and two corpses. The third corpse dashes towards Yamato and Sakura once again. Hinata and her clone defend themselves. The clone begins a rotation once more, and the real Hinata rushes towards the third corpse to intercept it. As she does that, Kabuto is able to hit her shoulder with his chakra scalpel. Hinata winces in pain, but blitzes the third corpse. Hinata takes a stance and says, 8 trigrams, 64 palms. She hits the corpse with blinding speed, shutting down its chakra and the paper bombs attached to it. It falls to the ground, not exploding. The other two corpses manage to destroy the Hinata clone, stopping her rotation with two simultaneous jets of tar. They rush towards the real Hinata now, readying tar once more. Hinata thinks, they will try to stop my rotation, I can't let that happen. She then uses a barrage of air palms blasting compressed air towards the corpses, who attempt to spit the tar, but the air palms blast it. They impact the tar, making it explode into several drops of a very thick substance. The several blasts don't allow the tar to get too far and reach Hinata. While this is happening, Hinata sees the four tails using its bijudama on Orochimaru, creating this massive explosion that destroys the triple Rashomon and sends a powerful shockwave. Kabuto seems distracted for an instant with the sight of the explosion. Hinata uses that opportunity and rushes the two corpses, taking another stance this time. 16 trigrams. 
grams, 128 palms. Hinata hits both corpses with amazing speed. Kabuto is barely able to see her fists move as she shuts down both of the corpses, diffusing the paper bombs as well. While she did that though, Kabuto weaved hand signs and tossed a kunai at her direction. Hinata uses her chakra as a barrier again. The kunai impacts it, doing no damage to Hinata. Kabuto closes his eyes and says, very predictable. Ninja art. Flashbang kunai. The kunai he tossed and impacted on Hinata's chakra shield is still floating midair in front of her. It erupts into a bright flash of white light, blinding Hinata. Kabuto says, now let's see how well you fight without your eyesight. Hinata not seeing anything thinks, I have to protect those two. She uses her memory to run towards Yamato and Sakura, listening in for Kabuto. She hears Kabuto running towards her direction, preparing a scalpel to target her and immediately begins a rotation. A couple of seconds pass, Hinata still spinning. She then feels a sharp pain on both of her ankles as Kabuto used the sound of the rotation to hide the noise he made to go underground and emerged at Hinata's feet, coming from below, the only direction the rotation doesn't protect the user from, and attacked Hinata's ankles. Hinata falls prone. For some reason, her body stops to function correctly. She can no longer move the right way. It seems like every body part she tries to move provokes another body part to move instead. Kabuto landed the same attack Tsunade used against him a long time ago when he attacked Hinata's ankles. He learned it over the time skip after finding it most useful during his fight against Tsunade. He then emerges completely from the underground and says, I admit it was much harder than I thought it would be. He prepares a blow to incapacitate Hinata. As he does so, an ethereal avatar of Sakura holds him in place, paralyzing him while it screams, You're not moving anywhere, you bastard! Sakura has woken up, and she casts her signature genjutsu on Kabuto. He thinks, Genjutsu, damn it, I can't move. I can't even break out of it. With a massive effort, Kabuto forces his arms together, forming a hand sign. Sakura screams, Too late, you punk! As she lands a devastating punch on Kabuto's stomach. We see his ribcage cracking open and he is sent flying, impacting the ground. Sakura jumps to follow up and finish him off. She comes down from the sky and lands a descending kick on Kabuto's torso, literally cutting him in half. Her leg shears through Kabuto, it impacts the ground and forms a massive impact crater as bold of stone fly in all directions. Sakura says, The mission was to capture you, but better safe than sorry. She looks at Kabuto's body, cut in half. She then realizes something alarming. That body doesn't have Kabuto's face, it's just someone else's. Hinata is still prone and unable to move due to Kabuto's jutsu. One of the corpses lying close to her stands up. It is Kabuto. He activates a chakra scalpel and goes straight to finish her off. The world turns into slow motion. Hinata closes her her eyes and thinks, he disrupted my neural network, my body isn't responding correctly. Still, the nervous system is powered by electricity, essentially lightning style. That I can deal with. She centers herself. Kabuto smiles as he's about to strike Hinata. She then opens her eyes and counters his attack with a gentle fist blow to his chest. Kabuto spits blood and pulls back to a safe distance. Sakura jumps back to Hinata's side saying, Hinata, are you okay? Hinata says, I can't stand up, he got my feet tendons. Sakura promptly begins to heal Hinata's heels and Yamato simultaneously with her medical ninjutsu. She says, I was careless. He was able to form a seal at the last second before I punched him, even under my genjutsu. He used some type of substitution and swapped places with one of those dead bodies. Most substitution jutsus are gone in the rewrite, but this one is very cool. It's the same technique Kabuto used to escape Kakashi when he infiltrated Konoha's hospital to try to kill Sasuke. It's also a very taxing jutsu in the rewrite, chakra-wise. By the way, Orochimaru's skin change substitution will also stay because that one is amazing as well and it fits perfectly with the character theme. And as I said before, the Orochimaru vs. Four Tails fight will remain mechanically the same. Kabuto stands wounded 20 paces away from the two girls. He thinks, I can't believe these two brats put that much pressure on me. If I hadn't used my substitution at the last second, I would be dead. It spent almost all my chakra and I can't heal my 
my wounds. Lord Orochimaru, how much longer are you gonna take? Sakura tells Hinata, we can take him. Hinata stands up, now healed, and says, yes, I can see his chakra is very low. Yamato, being healed by Sakura, stirs a little. Hinata then continues, we can capture him, and then we go help Naruto with Orochimaru. Sakura says, what? Hinata says, yeah, Naruto was overtaken by the QB chakra and I was fighting Orochimaru to the death, by the way. He's winning, though. She then turns her head alarmed towards the direction where Naruto and Orochimaru are fighting and says, they're coming this way, watch out! Orochimaru uses the extremely elongated Kusanagi sword, hitting the four tails and making it crash near Hinata and Sakura's location. The Kusanagi sword is still unable to pierce the four tails chakra hide. Within the crater created by the four tails in the middle of the forest, Orochimaru reaches his limit and thinks, it seems I won't be able to kill Naruto, this body is expiring, the time to take Sasuke is near. Kabuto looks at the four tails that landed nearby. He thinks, you've progressed quite a lot, huh? This isn't even a battle between ninjas anymore, but more of a battle between monsters. <laughs> Sakura looks at Naruto taken by the demonic chakra. She remembers everything Naruto has been through and starts to cry. Kabuto says, so this is how far he will go to rescue Sasuke. The boy is gone, only the monster remains. Sakura remembers the promise Naruto made to her to bring Sasuke back. She screams, No, Naruto! I'll rescue Sasuke! Come back, please! She motions to dash towards the four tails. Hinata holds her down, though, not letting Sakura move. She says, Sakura, don't be so hasty. Naruto can kill you right now. Kabuto only observes everything that's happening. Yamato opens his eyes. He grimaces in pain, but that pales in comparison to the dread he feels as he sees the four tails. He stands up and says, I have to contain that chakra. You too, you'll be my backup. The four tails gets up as well and dashes towards Yamato with blinding speed. Thick wood roots erupt out of the ground aiming at the four tails. Naruto is able to resist them and destroy some of them. Sakura then uses her genjutsu avatar to hold Naruto down, but he is too powerful and can still move. More wood comes out of the ground, restraining the nine tails even further, but it still resists. Hinata dashes at the almost immobilized Naruto, takes his stance and executes the 64 palms, making some of the nine tails chakra recoil. However, the nine tails strikes Hinata with one of its four tails, sending her flying as she falls unconscious. Yamato notices something strange about Hinata taking that attack. Still, he doesn't think too much of it. He swoops in and executes his chakra suppression ability connecting with Tsunade's necklace and the QB chakra begins to fade. Kabuto sees Hinata laying on the ground and jumps towards her direction. Sakura sees that and runs to intercept. Yamato can't do anything. He is putting all of his strength into containing the nine tails. Kabuto sees Sakura coming towards him. He pulls two kunais with paper bombs out of his satchel and tosses them towards Yamato. Sakura then throws two shurikens to intercept the kunais. They are diverted and explode far away from Yamato. But Kabuto uses that moment of distraction to grab Hinata and tosses a smoke bomb to cover his retreat. Sakura tries to pursue Kabuto but he is gone and he took Hinata with him. Yamato then suppresses the nine tails chakra completely and Naruto falls unconscious. His skin is completely gone. Sakura begins healing Naruto and also Yamato as he is still wounded from the nine tails attack. Sakura and Yamato then have a similar interaction as they had in the original though they are much colder to each other. At the end of it, Yamato swallows his pride and says, thanks for the save by the way. You let Kabuto capture Hinata because you had to stop those kunais. Sakura says, I didn't do it for you. Naruto wakes up as confused as he was in the original. Sakura cries tears of joy and Naruto doesn't understand why she's crying. Naruto looks around and says, where's Hinata? Yamato is very serious. He says, you let the nine tails take control over you and then you fought Orochimaru. You also hit Hinata and because of that she was captured. Naruto is mortified. His face is pure despair and he screams, we have to go after her now. Yamato says, we'll do, but we'll have to track her first. We cut to Kabuto as he regroups with Orochimaru, still carrying Hinata. Kabuto says, Lord Orochimaru, I think I managed to salvage our trip here with this little souvenir. Orochimaru looks at Kabuto, anger flaring in his eyes. Don't patronize me, Kabuto. The Nine Tails is more powerful than I anticipated. We have to get back. They then set off. 
In the rewrite, Yamato didn't put those trackers on Team Kakashi's foot, so he doesn't have a certified way of tracking Hinata down. They still do their best, looking for clues in the forest, and Naruto is still very much affected by having attacked Hinata. Yamato tells him, Naruto, you cannot use the Ninetales chakra anymore. I was assigned to this team because I can deal with it, but that power isn't yours. You'll be a detriment to us if you use it. Naruto nods, forgetting the ill will he had with Yamato for a second. His only concern now is Hinata. Sakura then sees something on the ground, a small dot of bright yellow light. She calls Naruto and Yamato over. Yamato looks at it and says, I knew there was something weird when Naruto struck Hinata. Now I understand. Sakura says, what do you mean? He points to the bright light on the ground and says, this jutsu is called sweat tracking. The user imbues its own sweat with chakra, and a couple of minutes after the sweat leaves the body of the user, it shines bright with that chakra. It requires amazing chakra control, as the user has to infuse chakra within their sweat glands, but it's perfect for tracking. Naruto says, But why would Orochimaru and Kabuto leave a trail behind? Yamato looks annoyed, but says, It's not them, it's Hinata. She's just pretending she's unconscious and leaving this behind for us to follow her into their hideout. I saw when she got hit by the nine tails' his tail, she used her chakra to block it but still fell unconscious. Naruto screams, why would she risk herself so much going into Orochimaru's lair? Yamato looks at Naruto dead serious and says, that girl seems to have an adoration for you, maybe even an obsession, don't ask me why, she'll probably do anything for this mission to be a success. Still, this gives us an advantage. If Kabuto didn't notice Hinata is not unconscious, this probably means Hinata can fake unconsciousness as well. Naruto smiles in relief that at least his attack wasn't the reason why Hinata got captured. Team Kakashi then begins to follow the trail of Bright Sweat. We cut to Orochimaru and Kabuto who's still carrying Hinata. Her eyes are shut and we see she's dripping sweat. She thinks, Naruto, please notice the trail. Kabuto and Orochimaru then do the same trick they did in the original of faking a dead body, but in the rewrite, instead of using Sai's body, they'll use Hinata's. This is much more shocking for Naruto and Sakura at first, Naruto even gets very desperate when he sees Hinata hanged there, but he gets very relieved when he learns it's a fake. Team Kakashi pursues Kabuto and Orochimaru and things remain largely the same up until Orochimaru and Kabuto arrive at their hideout, Kabuto still holding Hinata. She thinks, I had to stop my sweating before we got to the hideout, otherwise they would have noticed the tracking drops. She then senses something that sends shivers down her spine, it's someone's chakra. Hinata finds this extremely alarming. She she just witnessed the might of the Nine Tails, and she is right next to Orochimaru, but they pale in comparison to this new chakra. This one is different. It's denser, more intense. For the first time during this mission, Hinata feels fear. She then senses they are getting closer to that chakra. Kabuto then stops, and Orochimaru says, We have returned, and we've also got a little something during our little excursion. <laughs> I figured you'd be a little nostalgic. Hinata opens her eyes ever so slightly. She sees a dark figure sitting in front of a large snake statue. The figure opens its eyes and Hinata sees the crimson color of the Sharingan. That's the only detail she can see clearly. Sasuke Uchiha says, What's the big idea of bringing someone like her to this place, Orochimaru? Feeling bored? Watch part 14 of the rewrite right here. Like this video so we can reach the like hole and subscribe to this channel for more. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the changes I made in this video and thanks for watching.